great concern. You know, uh, you know, I, I talked to my attorneys the other day, and uh, they said that they were uh, getting ready to uh, meet with the prosecutor to uh, set up a trial date. But my concern, you know, with that is, is that, you know, they haven't uh, prepared me for trial. They haven't fully investigated this case. Uh, you know, and so, you know, I, I, they haven't, you know, you know, did the file proper motions to, in, a, in, a, in a proper manner. And so, you know, it's concerning me, you know what I'm saying? And um, they had a meeting the other day. And so the problem is I'm hearing that a court date has been set, but nobody's told me when that date is. Uh, you know, and I, I'm not trying to be ambushed at trial, you know what I mean? You know, because a lot of times that's what happens to people here at, at Bell County. Uh, you know, they, they get ambushed at trial, uh, you know, uh, they don't know, they don't be in the know. And so I, I constantly ask my lawyer to file a motion challenging the judge who issued the search warrant. Uh, he just refused to do that. You know, uh, I've asked him to subpoena uh, records to uh, the, the hospital records. He's refused to do that. Uh, you know, I, I mean, you know, I asked him to uh, do these motion induced tinkums and to call all these officers who were part of this case bring their own reports because the, the uh, DA office have been um, not giving us discovery in a timely fashion so my lawyers can prepare for trial. Then, I don't know if they are or not because I'm not being, you know, let in on, on the process, you know, as far as like what's going on in the know. And so that's concerning to me, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, on the 22nd of January, the prosecutor said that he had discovery that he wasn't going to turn over to my lawyer, you know. And so a lot of my uh, motions to do stickums and call the police aren't being respected, you know. Uh, they, uh, they, you know, that has, I mean, you know, and I'm asking him to, uh, there's a lot of evidence, you know, that they have to uh, go over to know what we can and can't use that trial. You know, uh, you know, they have we're not going through that process. And so, you know, to, to have a trial with inexperienced attorneys, you know, it, 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 it will turn out to be a disaster, you know, I mean. And so, you know, it's tough, man. You know, and, and you basically put in a position to want to represent yourself. But, you know, if you don't have a defense and your attorney's going in uh, and they don't have a, a full command of the case as to, you know, the uh, investigation part, and, 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 and you know, so it, it's tough, man. But, uh, you know, I'm just, uh, just concerned, man. You know, uh, you know, I don't see how I didn't have the right to be in my house. You know, uh, no one ever said a crime was committed at my house. Uh, nobody basically said I committed a crime at all. You know, so the police come to my house and, you know, basically just attempt to raid my house while I slept. And, uh, you know, it's tough, man. You know, and I mean, that's happening all around the country, man. You know, you had a guy in Dallas where the police ran his house him. You had another case in Houston where they did a new not a no not search warrant. They just shot and killed this guy. And they had uh, another one in Killeen where they just shot and killed this guy. You know, and so and uh, the way from what I'm getting to, from these reports is that uh, they were coming to my house to serve some kind of revenge. You know, and so it's tough, man. You know, to be here, to be in this jail for five years. You know what I'm saying? Why they, you know, change and, 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 you know, take out the evidence that they want to take out. And, you know, and, and, it's tough. and put attorneys on my case that they know will work with them, you know, for a fee, you know, and to, and to me. You know, that's wrong, you know. And I mean, these attorneys have told me several times that uh, Andy Phillips told me that he really don't know state law that good. And, proving that in court by arguing uh, uh, legal matters that had no uh, legal
Michael Merritt in my case, Carlos, uh, he's uh, filed motions, but, you know, he didn't file motions properly. You know, like, uh, he filed the motions to suppress, but he tried to put all my issues in that motion to suppress. And that's not legally right, you know what I'm saying? He, he wasn't even supposed to file a motion to suppress because it was no evidence that I want to suppress. I want to just challenge the constitutionality of the warrant, you know, and the judge who issued the warrant, you know, because it was nothing in that warrant that I showed you that, that was online that they said that I, was, I committed any crime, you know. And so not only that, it was no reason uh, for the judge to uh, issue a no-knock search warrant in my house because that's a violation violation of no knock policy under 108 8B4, you know what I'm saying? And so, uh, you know, if, if, if they don't challenge the judge issuing that warrant to my house, then I want to be able to challenge the fact that uh, there was no criminal activity, uh, criminal ac activity ever reported to ever happen at my house between me and nobody else, you know what I'm saying? Uh, there was no criminal activity a report to have took place between me and nobody else uh, in my parking lot. And uh, it's nothing in the affidavit that states that, you know. And so uh, I can't challenge these issues. I can't wait to be convicted and then try to bring these issues up. And I constantly, I'm constantly telling my lawyers that, look, you guys need to file motions and effective motions. And so, you know, it's hard, you know. So if they gonna take the money and then come in court and not be able to represent my case. You know, that's the toughest part. And that's, that's the way I'm seeing it. You know, I'm not just saying it, you know, it's just what I've seen. And, and, and every time we came to court, my attorney claimed that he wasn't ready, you know? And, and the judge proceeded anyway, you know? And so the judge is the one who appointed me this attorney, you know? And so, you know, we don't have no, uh, you know, working, trusting relationship, you know, where, you know, we can talk about the legal matters in my case. Uh, he refused to show me my discovery. He refused to, uh, you know, talk about the evidence that we need to, to prove my innocence, you know. Uh, they refused to uh, uh, request experts, you know what I'm saying, to uh, uh, test on my behalf as far as the probability because uh, the police officers seem to say that this officer was shot somewhere that I couldn't shoot, you know. And so that happens a lot here, man. You know, when guys go to trial, uh, they, you know, especially when they got court-appointed attorneys, that they can't, they don't put on a defense. You know, and so I talked to Anthony, he said, well, the bottom line is the bullet that uh, they said it came from the officer, it came from your gun. And I said, and I told him, I said, hey, wait a minute. They took guns to their house. They removed guns from they, they, their house. They bought uh, gun holsters to my house, you know. I mean, so, you know, there, there's reasonable doubt, you know, about that, you know, based on what the police officers say they saw. So are we going to use what the police officers say they saw? And, and, and so, and, 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 it, and it, that makes that, that means that it's reasonable doubt. You know, the police officer said the officer was shot under the stairs. So it's tough, man, you know, knowing what they're going to use because they've been taking and changing my police reports and they've been changing, man, they've been doing a lot, you know, uh, and so basically, you know, I, I don't believe that they're ready. I don't believe that they're experienced enough. You have one minute left. Hey, as soon as this soon just go off, I'm gonna call you back as well. But it's tough, man. You know, it's tough, man, being in this situation, man. You know, you know, um, being somebody who didn't know it was a police, being it's tough, man. You know, it's tough. So, you know, um, I'm just hoping, man, that. Uh,
feel and, and to know that they're going to violate my constitutional right to life, liberty, you know, and uh, due process of law, you know, because I believe that they're accepting funds and uh, I believe that that's, that's against the law. Also, um, picking up where I left off at is that I asked him to, I was reindicted. And so uh, they changed the, the way that you're supposed to uh, present uh, the case to a grand jury. And I, under the new system, I think that the uh, sheriff is supposed to uh, present the, the case to the grand jury instead of the prosecutor office because the prosecutor office has uh, been biased and putting on, on the, uh, the evidence in front of the grand jury and making one-sided. So therefore, you know, that's why they, they came out with the new house bill to uh, change their process. And so when they de reindicted me, I think they uh, reindicted me under the same pick a pal system that they use that was outlaw. And so I asked my uh, attorney to challenge the, uh, the, the, the grand jury indictment against me because, uh, as, you know, as you know, my attorney claims that he uh, tried to, he sent the note back uh, to the uh, grand jury saying that he wants to be able to uh, put on evidence in my case. And from what he told me that the uh, prosecutors, they end up getting this letter and opening it and bringing it back to him and then telling him that the process had already been done. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, and so it, it, it is tough, man, you know. And so I, I told them that they should challenge that, you know what I'm saying, and make sure that it was done right. And so, you know, like I said, man, you know, uh, you know, because the evidence in this case, what everybody is saying is that I was, uh, the pre rain people said that the house was dark and I was asleep. And so I'm indicted on knowingly, knowing that it was police, but everybody else said that uh, from the evidence of the case, uh, that's not the case. You know what I mean? And so, I mean, this is uh, what you call malicious prosecution. Uh, obstruction of justice, and you know, to me, it's just a, a big conspiracy, you know what I mean? And, uh, you know, to cover up, you know, the murder of a police officer, you know, and uh, just to say that the bullet came from my gun, and uh, with, you know, evidence being tampered with, you know, and so, and this department under that old chief, uh, Baldwin. This department, man, had a history of tapping with evidence in people cases, and you know, and as you can see from this uh, police officer here, uh, he uh, got indicted for lying about uh, trying this weapon. And I mean, look at uh, all the other, in my case, all these officers trying their weapons, and some, you know, we don't even know. All the officers that fire, fire their weapon, they fail to fill out the reports. And, you know, it's tough, man. You know, and um, with these officers saying they were in a crossfire, you know, it, it's tough, man. You know, to know that they got the power to take your discovery and make changes in your discovery as they as they will. And so, you know, if you, if you don't got your discovery, you know, you can't. Uh, expect the prosecuting office to be fair and so it's been biased you know this whole you know legal issues legal everything has been biased and, and, I, and I believe that my attorney took money under the table you know I, I, I believe that you know and because uh, like I said why would you take a case that you're not you know what I'm saying legally qualified to represent or don't know how to represent. You know, you can't give me effective assistance to the council if you don't know the issue, the legal issues 
in my case and how to present the case. And, you know, you know, it's tough, you know what I'm saying? So I'm just saying, man, you know, it's a fight, man, you know. And then a lot of people say, well, uh, you got you got to accept, you know, what, what they give you because you're asking for a, 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 a court-appointed attorney. No, nah, man, you know, I don't think an attorney should take a case that he, he can't represent. You know what I'm saying? And so, you know, I got, uh, I think Anthony Smith is a civil rights attorney, and Carlos is a, a what you call a, some kind of, uh, I forgot what they call him, um, you know, but it's tough, man, you know. It's tough. So, um, you know, I, I, uh, I think I, I, I go see the doctor. Uh, you know, I don't know when, but I got a doctor's appointment and stuff, and so it's tough, man, you know. But like I said, I'm trying to get witnesses, you know, called on my behalf, and I want him to uh, challenge the grand jury, indicting on my case to challenge word and indicting annoyingly based on the evidence, uh, you know, this, this, and I want them to, uh, you know, just, man, be able to, do the legal things because it seems like, man, I, 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 it's tough, man. It's a tough position to be in. But I'm frustrated a little bit. But I don't know if you can hear it in my, in my voice, but, you know, who wouldn't be if you were in your house, you never did nothing wrong, and, uh, you know, you believed the intruder was coming to your house, and you acted, you know, based on what you thought at the time that you acted. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, I never knew that the police would be coming to my house. And I don't believe they should have uh, came to my house because uh, what they claim is that they were assisting the uh, another department. And so my, my concern with that is if you're assisting another department, why would you raid my house without even seeing them, the warrant? not even having a warm present with you and just, you know, do a, a, a no-knock search warrant on my house because I believe if the uh, officer that seen that, that was over this raid, over the SWAT team, I believe that he would have seen this particular warrant, which I believe they made this warrant after the incident happened, after they knew that they already, uh, you know, violated my due process. And so I believe that this judge who made this warrant, I believe that uh, he uh, did it to cover for the police, you know. I think he, he, he did it to rubber stamp uh, the police conduct, you know, and uh, so it's tough. So, and so that's, and I think my lawyers are basically trying to cover for the, my prior lawyers' uh, uh, corrupt process, Michael White, you know, so you got everybody trying to cover for everybody. So it makes it so tough, man, when you go up against that kind of people, that kind of, them, those kind of issues. And then, you know, this area, you know, I don't know how I can get a fair jury, you know what I mean, on this area. So, you know, I, I hope they uh, try to file for a change of venues, but my lawyer said a change of venue could be worse than this. So, you know, it's tough. But uh, like I said, you know, I, I'll um, just keep everybody posted, man. And, uh, you know, everybody who's uh, coming and, 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 and looking at this and justice, uh, you know, I hope, you know, you keep coming and, you know, keep, you know, looking at, into this case because uh, this truly is injustice, you know what I mean? Because if it happened to me, and, you know, it can happen to you, you know, when the law is clear, the police, the judge cannot issue a warrant because the officer just asks for a warrant to search your house. And then the officer can understand and say he never seen you do nothing wrong. If that's the case, anybody can go to the police and say, look, uh, I want a, a warrant. I mean, I, this guy's doing this wrong. And then the police go and never see nothing to go ask the judge to search this house. No, this this one is wrong, man. And if my lawyers don't know how to attack this issue, then they can't be working in my best interest. 
you know, and it's been five years. You know, so it's tough, man. So like I said, uh, you know, right now I'm experiencing a lot of frustration. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, I, I don't, uh, you know, like I said, I, I have uh, nothing but respect for the officer and his family. And I wish the best, but you know, what they doing to this officer is wrong. You know, and so they. You know, sure that they can't have much respect for him or his family. You know, to try to cover up his 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 his, his murder. You know, and so you know it's tough. You know, so they really tight lipped about it. You know, and it's hard to believe that you know these other officers claim to be you know his brother, and what they do is retire and leave and go to another department. And instead of standing up and saying, nah, you know, this is wrong, you know, uh, you know, we're gonna, you know, do the right thing, you know, we're gonna do the honorable thing, you know, because to me, you know, that's cowardly, you know, and see, this all started with this one officer named Ryan Hart, you know, he had, he had a beef with me, and so he sent them officers there to my house, you know, and so it's tough, man, you know, and uh, he's still on the force, and you know, you got these officers, man, this department, you know, and then this ball when he had a, a cancer, you know, a cancer, you know. And so we just hope, man, that and praying that, uh, you know, the truth come out, you know what I mean? But, you know, it's, it's, it's tough. Yeah, you know, nigga, you know, um, well, going back to what I said, I'm a little frustrated. That's why I went off last time, but... You know, I want to speak on the police reports that's online, right? And I want to point people to uh, McNow's statement, uh, where he's giving a statement after I've seen report in his supplement, where he says that, uh, you know, when he uh, exited the kill zone, he's talking about under the stairs, the place I, I couldn't shoot. And he said when he re-entered it, the officer's feet was facing him and his head was close to the front door. And so uh, he said, you know, uh, he drug him from the front door across the porch and stuff, right? And so that's evidence that he got hit there. When you uh, look at uh, David Daniels' statement that the officer was in front of him, that puts him at the front door. When you look at Acres and all the officers that was at the car, Acres, True Love, and all they statement, they said that as soon as they heard gunshot, they turned around and they immediately seen officers fall left of the front door. That's the area that I can't shoot because uh, on my window is beyond the front door and I was shooting in the parking lot. And then you hear uh, Kirk, one officer, his supplement, he says he looks to his right and his left, and he realized he was in the crossfire, and he retreated. And then you look at Xavier Clark's statement where he says that he was hit, and he had the air knocked out of him, but, you know, the air is misspelled in the report. He said he had the air knocked out from him, and he fell, he rolled over, and he tripped, on the old, tripped over Otis Dent under the stairs. And so he also says in his other statement that when he broke the window, he had his back against the wall and that shots came low out the window, you know. And so, you know, when you read these reports, you know, it's clear that I was shooting low out the window. It's clear that they were shooting the interior when you read uh, one of the officers that was coming from the back. Uh, he said he was running from the back front and he's seen officers shooting into the interior of the apartment. This is where all the officers were at in the interior of the apartment, in the front door. This is where all of the evidence leads to, but when you look at the reports now, they took that out of the reports. You know, and not only did they, took, they take that out of the reports, you know, I'm wondering if they're going to call the officers to testify as to what's going on, because there are a lot of legal things happening in, in, in before you go to court. The judge make a lot of legal decisions, and uh, sometimes, you know what I'm saying, and then, you know, these, these attorneys won't call witnesses so that, you know, the, the true story can be revealed, you know what I mean? And so, you know, that, that, that bothers me.
bothers me. And then, not only that, you see that in all the cases here in Bell County, and, you know, where, you know, people can't get their discoveries. I got lucky enough to get that. And then, you know, I'm telling my lawyer, I'm like, man, you know, how come not? Officer Sidney, oh, well, the bottom line is your bullet. It's an officer. Look, okay, well, they took guns home. That's reasonable doubt, you know. You know that my bullet, you know. So you need to, you know, get an angle expert, you know, and all this stuff, man, because, you know, uh, that, that, it don't it don't make sense. And then, you know, you got one of the uh, the commander, me, he said that this is his uh, suspect. And then uh, I think they redid his uh, report and, and, get, and then he gave it. My lawyer ended up giving it to the judge. Asked my lawyer, why are you giving his report? He should be able to come and verify his own report. But they took that out of the report, the fact that he said that uh, this should be investigated. Now, what, what, what it seems to have happened is Dennis Baldwin shut the investigation down. You have one you know, minute left. You know, and so... The chief of police, this ended up being his demise where uh, after uh, this raid happened in my house, they got rid of him, you know. But, you know, like I said, man, this is tough on me, man. You know, where I get drugged out of my house like an animal, have a gun put down my throat. You know, it's tough, man. You know, I'm going to call you right back. Uh, you just in fries, man, at the way, you know. We was treated, man, you know, and uh, I mean, it, it, it was really bad, man. You know, I mean, I can't believe that in this country right now today, man, that you still could be drugged out your house like an animal, uh, have a gun, put in your mouth, pistol book, you know, sexually assaulted. You know, uh, my old lady, you know, had her ribs broke. Uh, you know, just had a face slammed into the ground and just, I mean, this type of brutality, man, you know, I mean, they shot so many shots, man, you know, and I mean, you know, I mean, I'm doing, man, what, you know, any other uh, citizen would do, you know, if they attacked in their home, you know, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm in my home and I'm thinking that intruder is coming in, you know. And the police clearly says that he didn't announce. You know, one of the police said, man, we didn't first announce. I mean, you know, what am I supposed to do? You know, I was in a do or die situation. You know, my window busted. And, and, you know, I, I didn't have time to process that. The only thing I know is I fear for my life and I fear for the life of Shirley. And so I acted. It was based on a split deck second decision based on what I believed at the time. You know, I believed that my life was in danger. The intent was never to uh, shoot an officer, you know, which I, I don't believe that happened. You know, and the reason why I say that is read the reports. You know, read the officer's report. Take your time and read the reports. These officers saying I was shooting low out the window. I mean, you know, the, the blinds were still in the window. And so, you know, man, you know, it's tough, man, you know, but I don't know what reports my lawyer going to use. Uh, you know, I, I, I told him to, you know, basically try to have this stuff in and into the record. A lot of times, if you don't have these reports and, and these DVDs and stuff in and into the record, man, you know, uh, as exhibits, you can't use them at trial, you know, so it's tough, you know. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to fight, man, you know. You know, I wish I could represent myself, man, but, you know, these, these attorneys, they haven't, but like I said, they haven't got me ready for trial. They haven't got me ready to take the stand. Uh, we haven't went over the evidence uh, that we, that we want to use to try to prove my innocence. They haven't requested that uh, we uh, get uh, experts, you know what I'm saying, to speak on the probabilities, you know, based off the officer's statements and what they were saying at the time. And so, you know, they don't do that a lot, man. So uh, that happens to a lot of people here, man. You know, they never get experts and stuff like that, you know, to show that, hey, how is it possible this man shot the officer when he was shooting out this window right here into the parking lot? And then the officers, you know, said, so they turned around, 
this officer hit the ground somewhere else. You know, and it's, it's impossible, but you know, you know, they, they want to get only a few officers to come testify, the ones that they know will lie, you know. And so, you know, it's tough, but, you know, we we going we gonna to see, man, but, you know, like I say, the system has never been fair, you know, and uh, like I said, these attorneys, I think they, and it's almost my belief that they took this money to, you know, to, you know, they bought new cars and moved to two new offices after they got my case and, and tell me they getting paid a lot, a lot of thousands and thousands of dollars, but you know, I mean, like I say, if you can pay all them thousand dollars, then you know you should be able to represent this case legally, and then you know not put in. You know, one time my lawyer put a motion in. He was trying to uh, call us, put a motion in. He was trying to get uh, some of these police who did uh, psychiatric treatment. And he was trying to get those uh, notes right, but he put the motion in. And, to get the notes, but he put a motion in to suppress. And I'm like, wait a minute, why are you putting a motion in to suppress evidence that you asked for, you know? And then he basically told me that he was messing up, you know? So I'm like, man, you know, this is tough, you know, to have these lawyers, to know that you're going into a fight with these lawyers and they're going to throw you a case, you know? And they're going to intentionally throw you a case. And then, you know, like I said, as I said, I can't raise these issues, man, once I'm convicted. You know, I can't raise these issues, man, you know. But I think they need to ask for a change of venues, though, you know, because I think that statute that they got in front of the uh, courthouse, I think that might violate my right to a fair trial. You know, they got this big statue in front of the thing, and then especially in the climate that we live in now, you know, and uh, so, you know, I think we need to try to uh, move, move it somewhere else where, where um, they don't have to walk past that, you know, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, I'm already in, in already a bad enough position to be in it. And, and, and based on the law, if I hear the attorneys that will buy by the law, follow the law and file the correct motions, you know, then it don't make no difference. I was convicted. The motions will give me, you know, a, a, a fair trial because, you know, you know, it's, this this place is biased. The judge, you see the court is biased, the prosecutor officer is biased. And so, you know, it's tough, you know.